What's up? Mon Show in the house with another session of Get Schooled. Are you ready for today's pop quiz? Now I want you to pay very close attention. Identify one of the main drivers behind dynamic optical transport. Is it A, rapid growth in rural areas, B, handle massive bandwidth growth via multi-channel WDM, or C, Fred? Get it? Fred? The, the driver's name? Ah, uh, never mind. Don't know the answer, don't worry. Sit back and relax. It's time to get schooled. Hi, I'm Dave Morphis here today with Burt Bisher. Today we're going to talk about dynamic optical networking. And I think the first thing we need to do is set the stage by talking about what are some of the bandwidth demands that are driving today's metro networks. Thanks, Dave. I think we're seeing bandwidth increase in both wireless and wireline networks driven by new service offerings from carriers. On the wireless side, we're seeing 3G start to take off, driving increased high-speed data to people's cell phones. On the wireline side, we're seeing new technology drive high-speed data, video, and other end-user applications to the home, again driving more bandwidth in today's Metro Core network. That increase in Metro, an increase in demand is driving people to reinforce their infrastructure and, and drive more optical spend. What are the most important considerations that operators have to take into account when they're building out these optical networks? Dave, one of the most important considerations we're seeing as carriers build next generation high capacity networks is that technology has changed. In the last several years, we've seen the benefit of optics, amplifiers, and WDM, not only in cases for fiber exhaust, but allowing carriers to build lower cost networks than they traditionally would build with standard Sonnet SDH or packet-based transport equipment. Bert, let's talk about how dynamic optical networking helps operators save cost in the network. Sure, Dave. One of the key things we've seen with traditional networking is that at every serving office, electronics are placed. And those electronics are placed based on the sc scale of the overall demand the carrier needs to get in a metro area. The, one of the major benefits we're seeing with optical networking is optical devices allow you to pass through capacity at a much lower cost per bit than traditional electronics. Therefore, by putting in optical networking day one, as your networks require more capacity, you're not placing high cost electronics at every location. You're only placing the electronics at the endpoints where you need the actual service capacity. Let's talk a little bit about capacity. How does dynamic optical networking help operators when it comes to increasing the capacity in their networks? So one of the things we're seeing is traditional networks are built using electronics where the overall capacity in the network is limited by the bit rate of the high speed interface of those electronic devices. By putting in an optical network day one, you're really providing multiple high-speed interfaces per node. Those high-speed interfaces can now just be added as you need to add capacity. An additional benefit we see is mesh optical networks means you don't need to know where your capacity needs to get from at the beginning point and the end point today. Because these dynamic optical networks are flexible in design, you can be wrong in your planning. And if you're wrong in your planning, you just reprovision where your wavelengths go to in the network, and you don't have to go through costly redesigns or, or equipment overhauls. Bert, what then is Telabs doing with regard to dynamic optical networking? Telabs has a portfolio of products in the packet optical transport space. Um, Telabs defines packet optical transport as the combination of WDM, TDM switching, and packet switching in a single network element. In that area, we have very large devices that support multi-degree Rotom capabilities with N by 40 gig wavelengths down to single rack unit devices that have the same capabilities but in a smaller form factor and smaller capacities. Telabs views having a scalable portfolio allows carriers to choose the right size box for the right size application to truly build both a scalable and a cost effective network to meet their service needs. Now you should be done already. That wasn't very hard. The correct answer is B. Now if you missed the answer, don't worry. Go download a cheat sheet at inspirethenewlife.com. Come back tomorrow for another quiz. I'll still be here with Fred. I don't write this stuff, guys.